Anmol, Anmol, can you hear me? Anmol, Anmol, yes, Kumar Gupta, tell yes, me sir. one thing that did I start the definite integral? Or just uh, what was discussed in the last class, the radius of curvature and all these things? Sir, last class I did not attend, sir. I was not able to attend last oh. class. Last class, you don't see him. Sir, looks like you don't see him. Joyita, Joyita. No, sir. Last time, sir, I was not able to attend. Connection poor. Sir, sir, sir. Okay, tell me. Okay, tell me. Sir, Nisha. Ah, Nisha, tell me. Tell me, tell me. Last time we discussed the evolution and involute asteroid. Last time. Ah, your sound very bad. What are you saying? Sir, last time, last time we discussed evolution and involute. Evolution and involute, right? Yes, sir. Uska aage to nahi gaya? No, sir. Ah, sir, ठीक है. हाँ, ठीक है, ठीक है, ठीक. तो definitely का last start होगा. Okay, sir. Definitely going to start over it. Okay, let me then open it. I hope everybody can see it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So the prerequisite of this uh, definite integral is obviously the indefinite integral concept of integration, how a function can be integrated. And we are already habituated with the concept of inverse operation of differentiation. Integration has been viewed as an inverse, inverse operation of differentiation and uh, this you have already been learned in 11, 12, and uh, definite integral is also there, but now we will study in, in more detail. So whenever definite integral, definite integral means X will have some range of values in the integration. X will have some range of values in the integration, so ultimately the result will be some number. And in the indefinite integral, the result is the result is what? It is a function. Okay. 
So integration of sin x is minus cos x. Integration of cos x is plus sin x because differentiation of sin x is cos x. Differentiation of cos x is minus sin x. So result of an indefinite integral is a function. The result of a definite integral, that means when I evaluate this integral throughout an interval a to b, that will give you some number. Now, this number, this definite integral, a to b, it is denoted by integration of, already you know, integration of a to b fx dx. Integration of a to b fx dx. So this integration, first of all, first thing you should know that fx, the function, must be continuous in the said domain. What will happen if it is discontinuous, that we will discuss later, but the discontinuous actually is not required, it's not it's disliked. This discontinuity is not liked. Okay, so basically, we when the, we come up, come, uh, come up some uh, uh, in front of some discontinuity uh, that we want to actually bracket out. Okay, from the entire interval, we bracket out those discontinuities, and only we find the integration values in the piecewise continuous intervals. That is a separate thing. I will discuss this thing later. Later. But for the time being, we are assuming that the entire interval, in the entire interval, the function is continuous. And obviously, continuity means, as I have already told you, continuity means finite valuedness. That means finite, fin finite valued function should be finite valued. So entire result of the integration should be also finite valued. Now, what this finite value will mean? So we can give some totally a different interpretation of this definite integral. Uh, Apart from this converse of or notion of differentiation, this we will discuss today. Okay. So, first of all, let me tell you. So, what do you mean? Okay. So let us first show you some figure. So, this is the uh, geometrical interpretation of A to B fx dx. And once you can go through that and grasp this idea, then it will be very easy. Suppose, uh, look at the first figure, that is, there is a curve, suppose y is equal to fx. Now, basically, you should remember that only one formula you know, everybody in the entire world of mathematics, there is only one formula, only one definition for calculating the area of anything. That is the area of a rectangle which is length into breadth. Area of a rectangle which is length into breadth. Now, using this basic idea, using this basic idea of length and breadth, we calculate all possible other areas. Hello? I am So, basically, uh, this uh, area of an uh, rectangle is known to us only, and that is the formula. You know already the formula is length into breadth. Now, this thing will be used cleverly to integrate, to find the area of any other area of, diff of arbitrary shape and size. This is the marvel in calculus that we can use this small concept to utilize. We can utilize this small concept to find the area of any other dam uh, uh, shape of shape under any curve. Okay, so this is the basic thing. Suppose suppose this is a y is equal to fx curve. Okay, y is equal to fx curve. This is your x is equal to a point. Uh, just tell me this one. Okay, this is your x is equal to a point. We we can we can denote it by x zero also. X zero will be equal to a. And this is your x equal to x1, x1 equal to b. These are the two terminal points. Suppose this is a curve. Now, we want to calculate the area under this curve, enclosed by this curve, these two ordinate, fa and fb, okay? fa and fb, and this real axis. So this is the entire area, okay? This is not the dotted area only, this white area and dotted area. The entire area is the actual area uh, we want to calculate. Now, we don't know any formula for that. Okay, so what do we know? We can, we can first of all, we can take a very coarse, very gross uh, approximation to that. What will be that? 
that will be we just calculate the rectangle this rectangle what is the rectangle the rectangle of length of length b minus a okay that means x1 minus x0 b minus a okay and of of height f a suppose height f a okay so this is the rectangle so if i calculate this area this rectangle there will be this much of error the dotted line the dotted part will we will not be able to consider that will be an error okay now okay first of all let me tell you this is the call left hand side convention we are calculating the rectangle area by taking the ordinate from the left hand side okay you could take the ordinate from the right hand side ab ab into a, a, this x1 minus x0 okay in that case also you will get the area of this larger rectangle so in both case we will have some error okay uh, but in that case we will count more in the former case we will count less but both the thing will be finally equivalent that we will come to that point how they will be equivalent we are coming so first of all we can for the time being let us assume that we will always take the left hand convention uh, to calculate the recta rectangle area okay that means from the left hand side okay this fa into total 8 so that will be the rectangle now from look at the second figure the same curve now we have introduced another extra point here so x0 x1 x2 so we have introduced three points including the terminal ones including the terminal ones x0 and x2 and another x1 point now this will actually divide the total interval into two parts so now if i calculate the rectangle the smaller rectangle this one okay so fa into x1 minus x0 you can see fa into x1 minus x0 this part i am calculating okay and again calculating the rectangle area of the second part again taking the left hand side convention that means this fx1 fx1 follow my cursor fx1 into x2 minus x1 okay fx1 into x2 minus x2, that is the larger rectangle if you add these things that will be away again approximate the area under curve but in that case our position is better you can say why it is bit better anyone can say why it is better Nisha? Obhijit? Ognishar? Ognishar Mukherjee, can you hear me? Ognishar Mukherjee, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, why the second, in the second case, we will approximate better? Look at the figure and tell me. Ognishar, you are not responding. If your microphone is not working, please uh, respond in chat. Amir Ansari, Amir Ansari, where you are? In the last class, I was yes, asking sir. you, you did not respond. Where you were? You were last, in the last class, I asked you repeatedly, I called your name. You could not un respond. So, My are you going away? Not working tomorrow. So, why today is working? Change my headphone, sir. Change your headphone. But don't be just logging in and going away. That will not be uh, fair and not profit you. Uh, Ankita Sivastav, not getting any response from your side. Ankita Sivastav, where you are? Ankita Sivastav. Ankita Kumari. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have any you have an expansion on Kita Kumari. You yes, sir. Why this introducing the second point will make it better approximation? It has been given, it's already shown. So because there is one extra point uh, that is X1. Uh, that is 
so on that is why this part okay in the previously what i was calculating everybody listen sure. look at the figure in the first figure this rectangle was calculated x1 minus x0 this length is same so a to b this is same i am not changing this uh, x x coordinates so the end, end points okay and also curve and end points are same now in the first situation x1 minus x0 this b minus a into this fa in the second situation x1 minus x0 into fa so the then x2 minus x1 into fb sir can i explain हाँ बोलो सर द मोर द पार्ट्स वी वी डिवाइडेड द मोर एक्यूरेट वैल्यू वी कैन गेट हाँ दैट दैट इज क्लियर फ्रॉम दिस फिगर इन द इन दिस दिस वाज द प्रीवियस प्रीवियस सिचुएशन दिस एरिया वाज दिस रेक्टेंगल एरिया वाज कंसीडर्ड नाउ वी आर कंसीडरिंग दिस मास ऑफ मोर एरिया वेल इट इज इटन इंक्लूडेड ओके इट इज इटन we can now account for this part so it will actually mini reduce the error if you yes, take sir, more reduce. points it is it if you take more points suppose x1 x2 two points that means three partitions that means in general n partitions with n plus 1 points n plus 1 points and n partitions always remember it in the terminal points will be included that will be taken by x0 and xn okay xn equal to b and x1 so x2 Here the curve turns into a straight line. The not more curve divide, turns, not, the... no, not curve turns into straight. That is not the thing. The, the thing is that if you divide this length into more and more partition, this this rectangular strip will be thin, thinner, thin, very thin rectangular strip. We will get, and they will very accurately approximate. If you sum all these rectangular strips, suppose in this case, now we can accurate. Even more, even more, you can approximate approximate the curve accurately. So these are the original uh, rectangle area. This was the second up, second uh, development. This part, and uh, this is this is part, the middle part, small rectangle in the middle part. That is the third phase rec rectification. Okay. So gradually we will be able to take more and more spaces, actual area within this rectangle area. So as we will. draw more and more rectangles as we will draw more and more rectangles the more accurately we can approximate this actual area okay see here very clearly this dotted area was the uh, error here this shaded area is the error here this shaded area is the error this part is again taken care of so that is the approximation and if you take the left hand side notation why this is actually equivalent if you take left hand side you will get this area okay and you will get right hand side convention that means if a if a not in, instead of if a you are taking f if x1 if x1 into this x1 minus x0 this will be right hand side convention now if the width is large if the width is large then this left hand uh, rectangle that is smaller rectangle and right hand convention that is larger rectangle will be uh, significantly different but if If this partition width is very small, tending to zero, very small. Suppose this x one is very small to x zero. Okay, x two is very near to sorry, very near to x one. X one is very near to x zero. So these rectangular strips are very thin. Then it will be just immaterial. It will be just immaterial whether you are using the left hand side convention or right hand side convention. Is that okay to all? Yes, sir. Is that okay to yes, all? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is the basic idea that. if you take more and more and more partitions into by introducing more and more partition points so you will get thinner and thinner rectangles and they will more accurately uh, represent the area more accurately represent the area okay this is the basic idea so actually what does this uh, 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 sum of the rectangle strips mean they mean actually the area under the curve in the plane area under the curve y is equal to fx on a plane Okay, this is the interpretation of this area because this is the sum of all rectangular strips, area of the rectangular strips. Okay, so this is a typical area of the rth rth strip. This one, okay, h into f a plus r h. Now, why h is coming? If I take for our convenience of calculation, this is not the compulsion of theory. In the convenience of calculation, these all these partition we are taking equal. Okay. X one to X zero, X two to X one, X three minus all these partition we are taking equal, and the equal length is H. Okay, it did not be so. It this this may vary because when I am saying 
this x zero x one this width is tending to zero, then it is immaterial whether these uh, lengths are varying or not. It is again immaterial. But for the time being, we will not consider that general case. That is called general Riemann integration concept. That we will not consider here. So we will now either for our calculation and convenience, we will assume that all these widths are same, and the length is h. Okay. Length is h. Now h will be gradually tending to zero. H will be gradually tending to zero. So what is h into f of a plus r h? That is the rth rth rectangle. Okay. So f of what is the first rectangle area? H into f a. Are you getting f h into f a? I am always taking the left hand side convention. Okay. I can take the right hand side convention. No problem. So right hand side uh, h into f a. Second left hand side rectangle will be h into a f. Plus h. What is this point? F of a plus h. So h into f of a plus h. Second is h into f of a plus twice h. And the last one will be this. This right hand side will not be considered. The last one will be a plus f of a plus n minus one into h. Are you okay? F of a plus n minus one into h. This is the last point. A plus n h. This is I am not taking. I am not taking the Left, right hand uh, uh, sides. I'm only left hand side. So left hand side will be just a plus n minus one h. So this is the thing. H into a f of a plus r h. That is the rth rectangular strip area of the rth rectangular strip. Okay. So if you take the sum of all this, sum of all this. Okay. That means a f of a plus r h into h. Now h is constant. We, we told you for the calculation convenience, we will do. It so h is constant. I am taking it outside this summation. So h of summation of f of a plus r h r is equal to zero to n minus one. Okay, that is why why it is zero to n minus one because we are taking the left hand side convention. Okay, or equivalently h into r is equal to one to n. So when one to n, when I am taking the right hand side convention, what will be the first first thing? First rectangle that will be f into x one. So f of a plus h, f of a plus h. Are you getting? Everybody is clear. Second will be a plus twice h, and last will be a plus n h. Last one, a plus n h. Is that thing is clear to all? First, tell me. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, conf no confusion. So this any to any one of these two things, don't con mix this. Don't if you mix this thing, that will be error. Zero to n, it is the error. Or one to n minus one is wrong. Either zero to n minus one or one to n. H into summation of this. This is nothing but this sum of all rectangular areas. And now we are taking a limit, which which limit a is tending to zero. As n will be larger and larger, h will be smaller and smaller. Obviously, this is common sense. So h will be tending to zero. That is why it is called a. What was the heading? Integration as a limit of sum. So that is the limit of sum. So this limit is a is tending to zero. Okay. So this is the. Explanation behind this uh, concept of limit of a sum, and the interesting thing is that the result will be same when we will integrate this function integrand uh, by taking the concept of converse operation of differentiation, and then we will find the value a to b. What we will get, and if, we, if you uh, proceed in this way, uh, uh, calculating the sum of these rectangular strips. Every time you will get the same result. Okay, so although the concepts are totally different, but the actual final result will be always same. Okay, in whatever manner you proceed. So what we are doing, we are simply uh, introducing apart from this a and b, we are introducing n n uh, minus one n points a to one to n n minus one number of points. So total n plus one points and n partitions. And total sum s will be given by h into f a h into a plus h up to a plus n minus one into h. So that can be written as this way: integration of a to b f x dx. Okay, this is nothing but this thing: uh, h into sum h into summation of f of a plus r h r is equal to zero to n. This one. Okay, this is the thing. So this is just the notation: a to b f x dx is basically meaning this one: limit of the sum. Okay, where n h is equal to b minus a. Now, now it is uh, coming for solving problem. So, solving problem in basically mean how we can find the sum of this thing 
given a function f, given a function f, this technique for summing this summation of f of a plus r is that may be uh, very uh, uh, different in different situations because function will change. This function can be anything. Depending on the function, the strategy should be changed. But theory ends there, okay? This is the theory. Now we are coming to the point. Okay, another thing you should remember that if you put a equal to zero, what do you mean a equal to zero? That means we are putting it in the origin. We are taking the first, we are taking this first thing as the origin, this one. So this point, without any loss of generality, this point I can take origin. So I'm just, I'm just shifting this origin to this point. You can always do that. You can always do that. Hello. He says, we can always do that. This origin, we are shifting to this origin. Okay. So, if we take a equal to zero, then this f of a plus r h will be only f r h into h, r is equal to zero to n minus one. Okay. Now, let us take the first problem. So evaluate from the first principle. This is called first principle, okay? But uh, evaluating the integral from the concept of limit of sum is called the first principle. So first principle, a to b, e to the power x, dx. So obviously, a to the power x is an exponential function, always continuous in a b, always continuous in a b. So e to the power x, dx, a to b, that will be equal to in the, in the limit of sum concept. So we can write this thing, h into f of a plus r h. So what is fx e to the power x? What is f of f of a plus r h? That will be e to the power a plus r h, obviously. R is equal to 0 to n minus 1, where n h will be equal to b minus a. Now, so we are, we are writing this thing, putting r is equal to 0, 1 to n minus 1. We are taking e to the power a, e to the power a plus h, up to e to the power a plus n minus 1 into h. Okay? Now, what we do, we take e to the power a common. e to the power a is a constant, it will be taken common. Okay? So h into e to the power a into within third bracket what we are getting one e to the power h plus e to the power twice h up to e to the power n minus one h. Now tell me what that will mean. This is a very common series. Isha? GP. Very good. This is a GP series with a common term. First first term one. One. And, and common ratio. Common ratio. Power h. Yes, e, power e, to the power h. e to the power h. So we can sum it. We know if the common uh, first term is a and common ratio is r, is a into r to the power n minus 1 by r minus 1. Here a is 1. Don't confuse this a, this one, this a. First term 1 is 1. So e to the power n h minus 1 by e to the power h minus 1. And h into e to the power a is outside. Now, now you put n h is equal to b minus a. So it will be b minus a. So e to the power a into the power b minus a minus 1 will be outside and we are left with the limit limit of h by e to the power h minus 1 h tending to 0. This limit will be equal to 1. This is a very standard <laughs> limit and this, is, this will be equal to 1. Everybody is aware of this result, this limit. Okay. Actually, uh, let me tell you where from this limit is coming. I am telling you. Uh, this limit, limit of, limit of 1 plus 1 by x whole to the power x. Okay, so this limit, this limit is equal to, we know what is the limit of this thing at x tends to, x tends to infinity, as x tends to infinity, what is the value of this limit? This is equal to E, where E is a value less than e less than e less than 3, okay? When x tends to infinity. When x tends to infinity, okay? Now, if you put 
y is equal to 1 by x. Then y, when y, y will tends to which? Tell me, y will tend to? Y will tend to? x tends to infinity. So y is equal to 1 by x. So x will be tending to? Bolo? Y will tend to which? Nisha? Zero. Huh? Zero. Why will be tending to zero? So, so our limit will change in this way. It will be one plus y all to the power. Now, let, let me take it, let, let me denote it by h, okay, because our limit is in h. So, we are, we are putting it h. Now, so 1 by h whole to the power 1 by h whole to the power 1 by h. Okay, that thing will be equal to e, obviously. Okay, now if you take the power of both sides to h, what will happen? If you raise the power of both sides to h, Anmol, what will happen? Tell me. Yes, sir. Tell me, if you raise the power, raising power of both sides, to h. What will happen? I think everybody can see it clearly. Raising power to both sides to h. What will happen? Answer me. So 1 plus h equal to e to the power h. Yes. So 1 plus h equal to e to the power h. e to the power h. That means, that means, e to the power h, e to the power h minus 1 pi h, e to the power h minus 1, that will imply, that will imply, e to the power h minus 1. Now, if I divide with h, this thing will have the value but then equal to 1. So, limit of this thing, limit of this thing where h tends to 0 will be equal to 1, okay? This is a very standard limit and coming from this more original limit, this one, okay? I think these have been already discussed in eleven twelve. I don't know whether this limit is in eleven twelve syllabus, but these are the basic things, okay? So I'm not going into again proving <laughs> this result. Okay, that will be very uh, out of this syllabus. So if you're interested, you can uh, see any book on mathematics uh, or mathematics honors. Okay, you can see the results derived there. So this is the thing. Okay, so so to the power h minus one by h and the reciprocal. Okay, whether if this is equal to zero, then it a reciprocal will be also equal to sorry. This limit of this thing is one, the less reciprocal of this thing will be also one limit. So this is, I'm having one, okay? So I'm getting e to the power a into the b minus a minus one. That is equal to e to the power b minus e to the power a. So this is the result. Now, interestingly, if you integrate this thing e to the power x, what is the integration of e to the power x? Again, e to the power x. Now putting the value b and a, you will at once get this result. So this summation of this uh, rectangular strip will also give you the same result, okay? Now, anyone is having any question or any confusion, tell me at this point. Any doubt? Any question? 
No, sir. Clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Uh, Anjali, Anjali yes, Shah. Anjali Shah. Yes, sir. Any question? No, sir. Okay. And Aritra Bose? Yes, sir. Question? Any doubt? Uh, no, sir. Nothing? And Amir? Amir? No, sir. Okay. Then, so we are switching to the next problem. Same problem, same thing, just the function is different. So our technique may differ. It will be 0 to 1 x square. So again, 0 to 1 x square. x square is obviously polynomial function continuous in 0 to 1. So f of a plus r is that will be uh, a plus r is whole to the power square. Okay, now the first term is 0 a equal to 0. So that will be only r is whole to the power square. 0 to 1, that will be r is equal to 1 to n. Same thing, h, h into r is equal to 0 to 1. So same thing, h tends to 0 when n is equal to 1. So we are putting this h square will be common, getting outside h cube and 1 square, 2 square up to n square. This is the so sum of the square of first n natural number. Okay, that is the limit. And that we know already from the JPGP theorem, n into n plus 1 into n plus 1 by 6 into h cube. Now, if you multiply this uh, n into n plus 1 into n plus 1, and then again multiply with h cube, you will get this thing, 2n cube h cube plus 3n square h square plus into h plus n h into h square, okay? So why you have written this one? Because we, so that we can use this result, n h is equal to b minus a. So what is b minus a? That is 1, b minus a, that is 1, n h equal to 1, okay? So n is equal to 1, we can use there. Here will be 1, so 2 into 1, 2. Here 3 into n square, that will be again into h. So it will be 1, 3 into 1 into h, 3h. And that will be again 1, so h square. Now if you put h tending to 0, these will be all 0. So 2 and 1 by 6 outside, that will be 1 third. Okay. So the final result is 1 third. And... Uh, Last, last problem is that a to, a to b sin x dx, um, this should be equal to cos a minus cos b. For that, you should uh, have some idea on summing the trigonometric terms. So here, fx is equal to sin x, and if a plus r h will be sin of a plus r h, r is equal to 0 to n minus 1 h. Obviously, n is equal to b minus a. Okay, now. So we are getting this thing, sin of a, sin of a plus h, sin of a plus h, and that can be shown to be equal to this thing, a, a sin of a plus n minus 1 into h by 2 into sin n h by 2 by sin h by 2, so h tending to 0 into h, okay? So where from this is coming, you have any idea? Anyone can say where from this sum is coming? This sum is coming? Say p. Car AP, which one? What's the term? These are, these are not AP. Sin A then, this is not an AP term. Sin A and sin of A plus A, this is not an AP term. The sin A plus, sin A is not sin of A plus H. This way I cannot say. Anyone else? Arithmetic mean? It better mean for which? This, this, these terms are not in AP. Sin A, sin of A plus A, these are not in AP. Sir, series expansion of sin X. Uh, uh, uh. Three? Series expansion of sin X. Rejection of sin X. Series expansion, sir. Oh, series expansion. Series, no, no, no. That will, that will give you, for sin A, sin A is a constant. And series expansion of sin X, that will give you X minus X cube by 3 plus X cube by 5 by 5. Okay, so then again, for each of this term, you have to exceed expansion, then again, summit will be a huge thing. This way, it is not done. It is very simple. Trigonometric sum simple. of sin? Sir. No, this, this can be so not, not GP. Not GP. This is an AP, but AP for some different term, let me tell you. I, I will not show you the entire thing, but I will give you the hints, okay? This is coming from the concept of, uh, what is that? D-Member's theorem and Euler's theorem. 
you know this result uh, e to the power e to the power i theta e to the power i theta okay there is no theta so i am writing uh, beta okay instead of theta i am writing beta e to the power i theta that will be equal to what is that you know yes sin beta plus i cos yes. beta plus i sin beta yes cos beta sorry plus i sin beta and then e to the power e to the power what will be that i of beta plus h c that will be equal to cos of beta plus h into i sin of beta plus h isn't it okay. similarly in general if you take this terms e to the power what will be the last term e to the power n minus 1 n minus 1 into h n minus 1 into h n minus 1 in this bracket in bracket and this will be also n minus 1 into h this will be also n minus 1 into h are you clear so if you add these things then what it will give you e to the power i beta all these things will be added okay and you can take e to the power i beta common e to the power i beta e to the power i beta common and then remaining term will be what is that tell me if you just column wise add these things okay this is to the power i beta this is to the power i beta into to the power i h this is to the power i beta into the power i twice h up to to the power i beta into the power i n minus 1 h now taking to the power i beta common the term within first bracket will be to the power i 1 plus e to the power i h plus e to the power i h plus e to the power twice i h plus up to e to the power n minus 1 into h complete tell me yes sir yes sir okay very simple so these are the oh ha so that will be equal to what tell me one is cos beta one is cos beta plus cos 2 beta up to cos n minus 1 into beta okay this is one real part this is a real part and plus plus
class. What is the imaginary part? Oh. What is the imaginary part? Tell me. Same thing for sine. Only that will be sine beta. Sine beta plus sine two beta. Plus yes. Sine This is the thing. Now, this thing you can uh, take an AP. E, it be I is the power I H is the power twice I H up to inverse. So what is the first term? One. What is the common difference? It is the power I H. So this is a GP series. You can take this thing as a GP series. Okay. This part. So you have this. Uh, we have this yes. Yeah, what is the sum? Tell me. E to the power i beta. E to the power i beta into. What is that? Uh, e to the power n i beta. I n beta. I n beta. Enter thing in the. Numerator, then minus one total thing by what is that? E to the power i beta minus one minus one. Okay. So again, you can put this thing to the power i beta, all this thing you can put again, it is cos n beta minus sin n beta and everything, you can have this result. Okay, I'm not doing all this calculation, which is the basic hints of the proof. This way it is done. So by doing this and again, by comparing the real and imaginary, okay? So in your case, that will be the real part, imaginary, this part, imaginary part, sin beta, sin beta, sin, sin two plus beta, Sorry, sine one plus beta, this way it will go on. Sorry, sine two beta, sorry. Sine two beta, this way it will go on. So that is the imaginary part. So again, imaginary part will be compared with the imaginary part of this thing, left hand side. Then you will get, after small simplification, this result will come, okay. So this is the hints of the results. Now, so this is our final result. Now we are putting h tending to zero. So we all know that the standard limit is there, h, uh, h by two. So sin x by x, x tends to zero. What is that result? What is the limit? Sin x by x, x tends to zero? One. 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 So obviously one. this h by, uh, h by two by sin h by two, this will be also tending to zero. Uh, sorry, tending to one. So I, what I have done? I put here h by two one. This h of h, I have, I have made it h by two. So one two I have taken here common. Are you getting half into two? So this h by two into sine h by this one h by two. I'm making it limit of one because these are product all product. So I can take this limit individually independent. This is one. This twice of sine n h by two sine n h by two and sine of a plus n minus one h by two. So two sine a sine b. Two sine a sine b is what? Two sine and b is cos of a minus b plus minus cos of a plus b. Cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b. Okay, that we have written. And then I'm putting just the value of h equal to zero. So this will be all equal to zero. And nh will be, here I am, I am having one nh. Okay, there's an nh. nh is equal to b minus a, b minus a. Putting this thing, that will be only b minus half h. Again, that is h into zero is b. And there will be also h is into zero, so cos a. So ultimately, cos A minus cos B. Okay. Cos A minus cos B. But there is a slight mistake. Uh, actually, uh, this should be cos B minus cos A, right? This should be no, no, it's okay because sine x has integration minus cos x. 
sin x has integration minus cos x. So minus cos x will be obviously cos a minus cos b. Okay, it is okay, cos a minus cos b. So this way, so it will actually, the difficulty will may come in the sum of this summation of f of a plus r is, that is different thing, but uh, the theory is same for all. This way you have to solve the problems, okay? Have you understood? Or any question on that? Anyone? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No. No, sir. Okay, everyone, please no, say, sir. I have already, already I, I have sent you the note. Everyone collect it, okay? Everyone collect the note. I have sent you the note already in your group. Just yes. in the morning, I have sent it. Yes, so yes. let's collect it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay, then bye, everyone. I am concluding. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, attendance. Attendance, Deodo. Google Form, sir. Google Form. Or Kuchmini. Thank you, sir. Google Form, sir. Attendance, Deodo.